The year is 1964. John DeLorean, who was chief engineer over at Pontiac, wanted to offer an inline six with a twist single overhead cam. Overhead cam wasn't a new concept, just not common, especially not here in the US of A. Hell, AMC was still producing their Flying Scott flathead engine. One huge difference in the Pontiac overhead C6 engine was the cam was belt driven instead of gear driven or chain driven. Belt driven cam to this point hasn't been tried or tested. The Pontiac overhead C6 would use a fiberglass reinforced Glamar belt, very similar in design to the belts that drive superchargers. The Pontiac overhead cam six was loosely based on Chevy's 230, but just about every single component had been modified and or redesigned completely. The crankshaft was cast as a modular iron design. Supported by seven main bearings, block was extended below the crankshaft center line, which provided stiffness, improved bearing life, and smoother operation, free from most of the vibrations. Forged steel connecting rods, cast aluminum flat head, slipper skirt design pistons. The pistons also have deep recessions for valve heads. The cylinder heads are cast iron, fully machined combustion chambers. Intake valve is 1.920 inches in diameter, which is the same that is used on a Pontiac 389V8. Exhaust valves were 1.600 inches. Intake and exhaust valves were on the same side, alternating and angled slightly towards the manifold side of the engine. The valves were considered very large for the engine design, but it allowed for the engine to breathe better. Each of the valves had their own passages for a true 12 port design. They were held in place with integral valve guides, single hardened steel springs and caps articulated by hydraulic lash adjusters, cam followers. This feature automatically maintains zero valve lash. The camshaft is mounted directly within a cast aluminum cam cover. Camshaft was made of a hardened iron, wider bearing journals. The camshaft profile was 0.400 inches of lift, 228 degrees of duration, and mounted on top of the valves. Introduced in 1966, but worth mentioning, first appearing in 1964, and was found on the concept car, the Pontiac Banshee. 230 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, overhand cam, inline six, 3.8 liters. It's good for 165 horsepower at 4,700 RPM, 216 pound feet, or 292 newton meters at 2600 rpm with a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches compression 9 to 1 featured seven main bearings years this engine was used was from 1966 through 1967 it could be found in the tempest le mans firebird ponton did offer a hotter version of the 230 called the sprint the sprint used a different camshaft a hotter camshaft at point four three eight inches of lift and 244 degrees of duration they used the same valves but the valve spring pressure was increased by doubling up on the springs one inner one outer for each valve as well as higher compression ratio of ten and a half to one and was fed through a four barrel carburetor premium fuel was recommended the Sprint model also had a higher 65 RPM red line, 230 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, overhead cam, inline Sprint 6, 2.6 liters. It's good for anywhere between 207 to 215 horsepower, 5200 RPM, 228 pound feet at 3800 RPM with a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression is 10 and a half to one years. This engine was used 1966 through 1967 could be found on the Tempest, Le Mans and Firebird. In 1968 to 230 was stroked to 250 cubic inch displacement. 
Overhead valve, overhead cam, inline six, 4.1 liters. It's good for 175 horsepower, 4,800 RPM, 200 pound feet, or 325 Newton meters, around 3,200 RPM, with a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.525 inches. Compression, nine to one, seven main bearings. Years this engine was used was between 1968 through 1969. It could be found in the Tempest, Le Mans, Firebird. The 250 could also be had in Sprint as well. The Sprint model for 1968 produced the same 215 horsepower, but in 1969, power increased to 230 horsepower, which was pretty healthy number for a six-cylinder in the 60s. But the 230 horsepower did come with a bit of a caveat. It had to have a manual transmission. The automatic transmission still put out 215 horsepower. 250 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, overhead cam, sprint in line six, 4.1 liters. It's good for up to 230 horsepower with manual transmission at 5,400 RPM, 260 pound feet or 353 Newton meters at around 3,600 RPM with a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.5 to five inches. Years 1968 through 1969 could be found in the Tempest Le Mans Firebird. At the end of 1969, the overhead cam six was discontinued for a number of reasons. The cost of production was pretty steep. For example, it was cheaper to buy a 326 V8 than it was to get the Sprint model. The overhead cam six was the right engine just a bit too soon, V8 was king of the hill, the bee's knees, and having two less cylinders and paying more just didn't make sense to the buying public. Also in the late 60s, gas was cheap, but in 1972, gas started getting more expensive. And the big question for me is why didn't they bring this engine back? Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather, and all of these would be with the overhead cam six engine, but which one would you rather have? 1967 Firebird or 1968 Le Mans or 1966 Pontiac Tempest. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1969 Pontiac Tempest or 1969 Pontiac Firebird or 1969 Pontiac Le Mans. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below, or you can send me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love reading the stories. I love reading the critiques. I love reading that you guys just enjoy this channel, and I enjoy doing it. Till next time, toodaloo!